Hey, what's going on guys? Kel Mark with the easiestbusiness.com. Today I just want to talk to you about something that I think is one of the most prominent problems as far as residential painters uh, when it comes to bidding commercial jobs. So um, we know that um, in a residential paint bid, a lot of residential painters, I'd say like 95% of residential painters, they can give you a quote without even looking at the job. They can say, I do it for $3 a square foot. I do it for $3.50 a square foot. I do it for $5 a square foot. Wherever you are and whatever you charge, that's what you charge. So the problem with pricing that way is when you go to transfer to the commercial side of the business, things are completely different over there. So this is uh, talking to you. If you want to get into commercial, you're currently a residential painter, but you want to get into commercial. So let's go over a few of those things today. I don't have any scripts or anything for this as I usually don't for my video. So I'm just going to kind of wing it and we're going to see what happens. So residential, you can usually, uh, price per square foot. This is typical, you know, 350 square foot ATC. And the reason that you can do this is because in a residential home, um, most jobs are going to be the same. Most jobs are, I'll put similar. I think that's how you spell similar. I don't think that I goes there actually. I'm a painter, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so. But I don't like to do a lot of editing, Editing, so. Um, most jobs are similar, right? If, if, a, if a person in their house says, you know, we can do walls, we just wanna do walls, you might say 250 a square foot, that includes material, or $3 a square foot for just walls. Oh, you wanna add trim, that's gonna be another 50 cents. Oh, you wanna add ceiling, that's another dollar, you know, most of the time, unless you're in big, extravagant custom houses, most of the time those numbers will usually check up. Now, if ceilings are eight foot in this house, nine foot in this house, your profit margin may not be as high as it would be, but you get the picture. You can pretty much do it like that. I don't necessarily do it like that. I like to look at every job. Um, I like to go on site, meet the client. I always tell people in this line of business, if I can get to the client's house, I know myself, I like to talk, I like people, I like to relate to people on a, on a small world scale and I can get the job, uh, even if I'm high, I feel like I can get the job, uh, you know, regardless if I can just get in front of that client because I feel like I can relate to them and I feel like I can make them like me. So most jobs are very similar. A lot of painters do it this way, but let's talk about commercial. Let's say, let's say this is a, let's just say it's a big house, right? Let's just do a hypothetical. Let's say it's a 10,000 square foot house, 10,000 square foot, uh, a floor because that's how people, they don't do it by the walls. They do it by the floor. Let's say she wants the client wants walls, trim slash doors. Some people differentiate the two ceilings, Wall, ceiling, trim, and door. So they want the total package. They want everything. They want you to do that. You say, hey, you know, my price is 350 a foot. So if we go 350 a foot, you're looking at $35,000. This is just hypothetical. $35,000 to do this house, walls, trim, doors, ceilings. Okay, let's say you go over here to your commercial building. Let's say your commercial building is 10,000 square foot of floors. You don't bid commercial like this, but let's just uh, see the reason why you don't bid commercial like this. Let's say you do it at 350 a foot because you say that's what I get it done for. 350 a foot. 350 a square foot, you're looking at what? $35,000. Let's say you go in with this price. Well, let's analyze why this would actually be incorrect depending on the situation. Now, you may be uh, in a 10,000 square foot warehouse and you may not do any of the structural steel. You may not do uh, any of the any of the walls if they even have any walls. You may not spray any of the exposed ceilings. They may have you painting bollards and doors and then you come in with 35,000 and, and, and they look at you like you're stupid and they never call you back again to do another bid. So if you come here and you're in a 10,000 square foot uh, building, whether it be a department store, whatever. I mean, you could have um, some scope items could include exposed ceilings. You could have gyp ceilings as well in the restrooms or what other little office rooms they have. 
Um, you could have uh, exterior bollards that you wouldn't have in a residential paint job. Um, you could have light poles. This is a very common item when you're doing stores with parking lots. Um, you could have uh, exterior striping on the building uh, where they have where they change the color three or four times on the outside of the building. I know we're kind of talking about exterior work here, but a lot of interior jobs, uh, they also have you paint miscellaneous stuff on the outside, like bollards and light poles. You just gotta look at the plans and see what it is. But, you know, focusing more toward the inside, you could have, this could be a huge warehouse and you could have epoxy floors they expect you to handle, um, or at the least sealed concrete floors. That would include you know, interior work. You could have uh, graphics packages, maybe wall covering that they expect you to hang. Graphics, wall, we'll just do WC as wall covering. I mean, you could have, uh, you know, you have soffits. You have soffits, which I would include uh, here in gyp ceilings, soffits. You don't really have soffits in, in houses. I mean, you, you might have some that hang down in, in, in fancier bedrooms or you know, drop ceilings, which are kind of similar. They have their own little, uh, you know, tray ceilings and things like that, which are kind of like soffits. But um, if you go over here and you look, I mean, you have wall trim door ceilings. This is just very straightforward. You go over here and I mean, you have all these scope items and this is not even close to what you could paint. Uh, you could have striping on the floor. You could have interior striping uh, when it comes to like you go in a back room in a store where they might have forklifts like at a I mean, they do it all the time in Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, Dollar General. I mean, you'll go look and, and you'll look on the floor plan and they'll have striping all around the back room where they have a path striped out for employees, they have a path striped out for forklifts, for the warehouse workers, or whatever. I mean, that happens all the time. Um, and, you know, you could have structural steel, not including uh, your exposed ceilings that you need to paint with drywall or, or whatever. Um, but you have exposed columns and stuff like you'll see uh, when you go especially in warehouses you'll go look on the plans and they'll have you know red or or safety red or safety yellow up to like eight feet up to ten feet and then the remainder of that column is going to go a different color um, depending on the building if it's like a city a municipal building i mean you could have very intricate door casings the door casings would not just be like you know these door casings in my room but they i've seen really thick fancy i mean would take hours just to brush uh you know one door casing and and these have to be brushed because there's so many intricate details you're not really gonna i mean you're gonna have runs and you're not gonna really be able to spray all of these door frames but i'm kind of just spitballing here but i think you kind of get the idea you get the picture this is why you can't uh, a quote a commercial job the way you quote a residential job you know you could be upside down 20 30 grand if you do it this way you know if i go to walmart and you know let's say the walmart's 15,000 square feet and i do it at three bucks a foot that's forty five thousand dollars well i would never paint a walmart for forty five thousand dollars i don't know about you but that's a big build and that's going to take a long time with quite a few people especially if they're painting ceilings and things like that and a lot of times things you don't consider these businesses don't like closing down for you to work so they want you to work overnight so you might show up at seven o'clock at night after they shut down or after they have the least amount of foot traffic in the building and you may be working overnight you may be working weekends you may you may have a family you know that you don't want to do that and so you're going to charge more to make it worth it but if you price it like you price a residential job it's not going to come out how you want it to come out so residential by the square foot by the square foot residential uh, per scope item commercial so with commercial here's how you want to price the jobs you want to price them by scope item you want to measure how many square feet of walls that you have to paint down to the foot then you want to have a unit figure price for that so if you have you know just to make it easy if you have a hundred square feet of walls to paint let's say you do them at 50 cent a square foot 50 cent a square foot you know what 50 cent a square foot what are we getting here what's the math that's easy math right you're going to do them for 50 dollars 
So 50 cents a square foot, you're gonna do that 100 square feet of walls for $50. You know, that checks out, that's what you're gonna do it for. So you're gonna have a unit figure for every single line item that you come in contact with. And you can go back to my how to figure price per square foot video um, for commercial painting and it teaches you how to do it for walls. You can take that same formula, run it through ceilings, same formula, run it through bollard, same formula. You gotta use this formula a hundred times over till you have a price for every single item. And then when you go into the commercial job, then you got to pull your measurements. If you don't know how to bid off plans, you got to pull your measurements, add up all your money. And then at the end, what you want to do is you want to add equipment after, after all your markups. I don't believe in marking up equipment. I just don't. You pay a fee, you know, 300, 400 bucks, you get a lift for a week, you know, 500, 700 bucks, you get a lift for a month. Um, I believe marking up equipment will inflate your number to the point to where um, you don't want to mark it up because you could lose bids that way. You're already marking up here. If you do quality work, you're probably higher than, you know, chucking a truck. And so for them to go with you already, I wouldn't uh, push the markups any further than I had to. I would still make my good profits here on commercial. I wouldn't give up any ground. I'd, I'd make my 50%. I'd make what I want to make, my margins. And if you don't know how to calculate margins versus markup, I have a video where I did a kind of a TikTok and I uploaded it to YouTube because I didn't feel like doing one of these videos. So you can go check that out as well. But this is why you don't price commercial, how you price residential. I've kind of been rambling on, so I kind of hope this makes sense. This is one of my, I guess, more informative videos, but you kind of got to wade through a lot of stuff to get here. And like I said, I have no script. I just kind of spitballed this, but I hope this made sense to you guys. Um, stay tuned. The new website's coming soon. It's going to be all revamped. I'm going to be more active on that. Uh, blueprint reading course coming soon. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Uh, thanks for 100 subscribers, by the way. And so if you're not subscribed to this channel, we're growing pretty quickly, a lot faster than I expected. So subscribe and I'll come out with some new information soon. Thanks.